Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. I'm joined by the ele electronic man himself, Rich Stambolian. The most electronic man in sports entertainment. I don't know if you guys saw the picture I posted, but uh, that that was, I, I photoshopped the most electronic man the other day. Go back in the timeline and check it out. Pretty yeah, cool. yeah. The Rock is the most electronic man in all mm -hmm. of sports entertainment. What's going on, Rich? Not much, man. How you doing? How you feeling? Good, good. I jammed my toe. I have a little staycation coming up tonight. I'm staying in the Ugh. city, going out to dinner, so uh, I'm looking forward to the day ending already. Oh, look at this. Batcher 3000, 199. Good morning, my Violets, and Hey Geek. Hey Geek is his new show, by the way. <laughs> hey that, that's MG's new show. Holy moly, a, a lot of wrestling this week, man. Oh, dude, so uh, much news. I, I, it's, Dude, we're 13 days into the year. And it's I know, starting. it's crazy, right? Ooh, Friday yeah, the 13th. I, I didn't, happy Friday the 13th. I did not, I did not imagine um, the start of the year could have topped last year. You know, Cody leaving was a huge story showing up in, at WrestleMania. But uh, it seems like we're on our way to a wacky year. I did not have any of this on my uh, wrestling bingo card for this year, especially the news that, didn't drop or did drop at the beginning of the week that had everybody freaking the f out you want to just yeah. jump into it well yeah let's go into all the stories uh we have the headlines here that mg put together so you want to start that yeah 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 so we got a wwe change in leadership and potential sale that's like the big overarching theme i guess to the beginning of the week so boom wwe formally filed with the sec that vince was officially back Yes. It's going to be a, a little bit of business talk, so we're going to have to go back and forth, and I'm going to try not to pass out. No, try not to pass out. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot going on. So this happened on Friday, by the way. They they kind of, this the story came out Friday afternoon to kind of um, alleviate any any kind of, you know, negativity on the stock. They filed, uh, they formally filed that Vince is back. George Barrios and Michelle Wilson were added to the board. Uh, Joe Allen... Joe Ellen Dillon, Jeffrey Speed, and Alan Wexler were removed. Also, there were two other um, people that got removed. Manjeet Singh, I believe he's a Sony executive or from Sony. And uh, what is it? Ignis Lahoud? How do you spell? How do you pronounce that? Ignis Lahoud? Lahoud? Yeah. All right. Uh, out of the board as well. So. It's a much smaller board, obviously. At 10 a.m. East, WWE issued a press release in which they said they welcome McMahon back and they were looking to exploring all strategic alternatives to maximize shareholder value. Very unique wording used here. There's a specific yes. reason why they used the words that they used. The stock market was up 17% upon hearing the possibility of a sale. During an all-hands-on-deck Zoom meeting, that happened in the afternoon, employees were told there will be no changes to the management team or their responsibilities, including those of Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and Nick Khan. This meeting was primarily led by Steph. Saturday, MG did a great job at this, by the way, putting this together. Everybody uh, give him a little thank you for this. Saturday, it came out that WWE had retained the services of J.P. Morgan for many reasons. One... JP Morgan also has a lot of relationships in Saudi Arabia. They are their bankers. Uh, also, I believe Morgan Stanley holds Vince McMahon's margins. Same thing with Goldman Sachs. So they are eliminated from representing them in a sale because it's a conflict of interest. You also need another bank involved. So a lot of people are, you know, yesterday I saw the story about JPMC possibly handling both sides of the deal. They can't do that. They can't, they could can be involved in both sides, but they can't handle both sides of the deal. You need another bank also. So that that's kind of there. So we're still on Saturday here. This is the timeline, boys and girls. If the deal, so it came out that they, they've retained the service of JP Morgan. If the deal occurs, it would most likely be within the next three to six months. That is 100% accurate, by the way. If the deal is happening this year, I expect it to happen within the next three to six months. Normally, these things take a little bit. Here are the front runners here. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, 
I'll tell you why I know a little bit about this, because of my background in hospitality. The Saudis, a couple of years ago, injected billions into the hospitality world, and I have a lot of friends in that field, so I'll, I'm going to touch on that. Comcast, NBC, Universal, which is already a content partner of WWE's long-standing 40-year relationship, Fox, Disney, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Netflix. Tuesday. Are you liking this? Do you like this way that I'm doing this, Rich? This is nice. It's putting me to sleep. Okay, I'm, do you want to uh... interject or do you want me to go through this and then you <laughs> no, no, come No, 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 keep going. Okay, all keep right. going, keep going. All right. On Tuesday, Stephanie McMahon resigned as WWE's co-CEO and chairwoman of the board. Then Vince McMahon was named executive chairman after Stephanie left. WWE announced in a press release that WWE's board of directors had unanimously voted Vince McMahon as executive chairman of the board. Brian Alvarez tweeted, big news on a possible sale. Tuesday night, everybody it's lost their minds. Yeah, everybody went bananas, man. It was kind of funny to watch like everybody just piling onto this stuff. Um, this is what happens when you concentrate too much on social media with yes. this kind of thing. You know, like everybody lost their shit because of well, this. Well, the rumor, because the rumor is that the Saudis and WWE had agreed in principle. Right. I was, listen, I heard the same exact rumors uh, leading up to Brian's tweet. Everybody, something was buzzing. So something changed where there's smoke, there's fire. So did the deal happen? No. Uh, right. I saw a lot of people posting that the deal was done, which was not accurate. It was a little bit of a jump the gun situation here. But mm -hmm. uh, there is, there, you know, there is fire here. Speculation, it's the Saudi group. The internet lost their minds over overnight. Wednesday morning, it started to get debunked. Uh, even from official, uh, in a in a semi-official way, somebody at WWE mm -hmm. debunked it and said, you know, they're looking at all their options. It's not a no, but there is no deal signed. Thursday. Yeah, so Thursday. And then we'll go yeah. into today. The cons are apparently in the mix of buying. Now, amazing. listen, I, I think this is a great PR optic that they're doing. Uh, if, if I was part of AEW's PR or, 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 you know, whatever that the, the parent company's PR would be, I would say that this is a great way to put your name out there and to kind of say like, listen, we got the same money that Vince does, but we have more money than Vince does. So mm. put us in the mix. Do I think AEW will purchase WWE? I, I would be so shocked. Uh, I, I would eat, I would definitely eat my shirt then. You ain't gonna eat your shirt, man. I'll you eat my shirt. You know what? Bets. I'll eat my shirt. You, I'll eat my shirt. You, I think you should take the wig off. You think I should take the wig off? <laughs> or, oh, or shave one eyebrow. This would be again. This is would be life imitating art. Imagine if the cons pull what Vince did like twenty years ago, like when he bought WCW, right? Yeah. You get that surprise on Monday Night Raw. Tony Khan shows up. That would be hysterical. I don't know if that's going to happen. But and also like to go back a little bit, I feel like people don't realize like unloading a company of this magnitude is not like selling a car. You know, it's not like some guy's going to walk off the street and be like, hey, I'll give you two thousand for your uh, for your old Ford Explorer. Like, yeah. no, this shit takes effing time, you know, and I think people lose their minds for no reason apart from that. <sighs> Listen, I let's break this down a little bit, OK? Yeah. Um, I, you know, let's start off with, with what happened with Steph. Steph is gone. Not only did she, last time when she left, she had stepped mm -hmm. down from her position, but she st remained on the board with the intention of returning at some point, just not in the same position she was in prior. That is what I was told by WWE when she left. Then she was buried astronomically on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> Wild, right? Wild. She was, I mean, really... I, Essentially, she they they had put out there uh, that she was incompetent. Investors didn't have trust in her. She dropped the ball. She was not good in that position. Uh, and then, like two weeks later, she's back and she's running the company. So fascinating. But this time, Steph left the board, so Steph is out. Out. Very well, interesting. You know what's fascinating about this is the the first time Steph stepped down. 
um you know you could say that it was a little bit of like corporate shuffling and a little not subterfuge but just a little smoke and mirrors you know because they saw the writing on the wall with like the the lawsuits against vince and like all that stuff and having him step down you know like who's to say like this can't be part of like another big thing where in a few months steph is going to make her return in some way you know to the I, company. I, yeah i mean anything is possible for sure um i i don't I don't think this was a positive leaving. Last time she had planned, she had told people already that she was planning on taking a little bit of a leave. She's worked in that company since she was 14 years old. So straight. Yeah. So she's really never had time off other than when she had the when she had the kids. So, you know, maybe she it was time. She needed a little break. I get it. I totally get yeah. it. But now this is a little different. She's she's out of the board. So that's another space that's going to be open that Vince needs to fill. Vince has essentially assumed all control of the board. Um, and when you control the board, you control the narrative and you control everything else in the company. And I keep saying that. Uh, people need to stop, in my opinion, stop worrying about creative, that he's going to put himself as the head of creative and the SEC <laughs> won't. The SEC doesn't give a crap about WWE's creative, okay? Exactly. They care about it. And and if you think Vince McMahon sitting as the executive chairman of the board at this very moment does not have any kind of input on the creative direction of the company you are you are lying to yourself you're I making people are just up a scenario in your mind to make you feel better uh he doesn't need to be head of creative to be in charge of creative in that company it's his company exactly i think people are just afraid that they're gonna shove bobby lashley into some kind of like cuckold angle again oh my god that was paul Heyman, though that was a paul Heyman. was it idea. yeah that was paul um also Let's go to the sale idea here. Listen, you got you got contenders. Uh, Nick Khan was at a uh, college football game with Bob Eigner and the head of ESPN. Your dream may come true, Rich. Hey, listen, I'm really, a big fan of the mouse in this situation. I, I know. You really want it to be Disney. I don't see it being Disney. I don't think it's going to be Disney. I, I, m more than anything, I'm leading that they go private. And the reason for that is if WWE goes to Disney, Vince McMahon cannot be in charge of that company. Oh, right. He won't. Yeah. Disney well, won't morality do that. Clause. Yeah. yeah, listen, the, the, the Disney, you can't, you can't criticize, you know, China when it comes to Disney. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there, there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts there and they don't really tolerate a Vince McMahon type, type person. But would Comcast, I, I mean, you you still risk getting ousted immediately. You still risk that. I I don't think he's back just to do a sale. I think he's back to be in some sort of position of power. And how are you going to do that? Yeah, you know how the Saudis they don't care. They want things to be operating the same. Vince is back to negotiate TV. He's going to negotiate the TV deal. He'll be running. You know, he'll still be chairman. You know, I don't know what position. There's no board of directors at that point. But maybe they could come up with some honorary position where he's running the company and there you go it's business as usual with saudi money backing it now i got a question for you yes could this be in some interesting way a attempt to leverage a sale because saudi interest is very high or like the speculation of saudi interest is very high right and uh, i think it was reported the other day when people thought they were selling the company that the offer on the table was 6.5 billion dollars right uh, now yeah well no the it, it was that's the market value okay so that's the so, market value at closing so right now the market value is 6.6 .6, the market cap is 6.62 billion right now so let's say the saudis let's say the saudis offer him Eight. Or somebody or WWE eight, eight billion, right? Yeah. Now, could that be used as leverage to say, hey, maybe Comcast will say, Hey, listen, don't sell to the Saudis, we'll give you ten. This I mean, listen, uh, uh, Comcast is already, I mean, possible you're gonna look at the TV rights situation, right? Mm -hmm. I don't expect WWE to be on Hulu for next day TV rights. So that is a right. separate deal. The right place would be Peacock. But is Fox going to be willing to give that up? There's also the Fox element. So if Comcast mm -hmm. wants to be totally in bed with WWE, which they should at this point, they're going to have to renegotiate. The, they're going to have to come up with a new deal that includes SmackDown, NXT, Raw, 
peak uh, the WWE Network and Next Day rights. You're looking at a billion dollars a year over the yeah. next five years. So is it worth it for Comcast to keep doing that? Or is it worth it, like you said, to, to throw in an offer to purchase them? But the guarantee would probably have to be for Vince. And what happens to Vince? That has right. to play a part in this. I don't know if it's Comcast is going to tolerate it. it I mean, yeah. it's it's like a real life succession. I mean, the, the, there has to be a movie oh, yeah. based on this. Uh, you know, this is such a fascinating turn of events for this company. The other thing here is generally when you have a publicly traded company like this, right? You don't necessarily mm -hmm. go out of your way to sell the company when you're making the money that you're making. Right. So why are you selling it? To me, you're selling it to take it private. You're not selling it to be, remain public. You're not mm -hmm. selling it for, I mean, obviously the stock, the stockholders are going to get over the value of whatever it is today. Maybe it'll be $102 a share. Maybe it'll be $108 a share, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you merge with NBCU, you still risk the chance of not having control and then putting their own court, you know, CEO in place. Right. What does this mean for Nick Khan? Uh, there's so many moving parts here. But if you go private, then I think most likely everybody's going to stay where they are. I wonder if there's an executive on either end that's like a real huge fanboy. Uh, on the NBC side, yes. On the Saudi side. You know, the Saudis, they want, they want return. They want to make money. And right, the, right. the money, they're not, they're not buying this to, to appease Vincent because somebody who's like, Saudis have so much money, they don't care. I'm like, they don't do business like that. Like, they, they want profit. Like, they, you have to immediately show you're making a profit here. Well, I have a question. Yes. Is this um, a definition or term of uh, term sp uh, sports washing? Where they, Sport. uh, where they um, want, want to look... Um, Make their country and their their view look better by bringing in sports. Like I don't know. I, I by the way, I hate that term sports washing. I, know. I think it's such I, a I, stupid yeah. term to use. Um, no, it's 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 their propaganda arm. It's their yeah. But the, but this is their investment. This this has nothing to do with uh, the propaganda that they do. This is them investing in money making projects. The Live Golf Tournament is somewhat their propaganda arm. However. It's more that they're entering the space and they have the money. Yeah. Listen, and they own five percent like, of Disney. They have five percent of Disney. They they have uh, points in Uber. They you know the Saudi that their their investment their sovereign uh, investment fund is invested in like everything. Wasn't their original plan with WWE part of their whole ten year like yes rejuvenation yeah. thing where they wanted to make like. Saudi Arabia more accessible to like everybody on in the world or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That that's part of their their PR that they they want to evolve because listen, oil they have enough oil for the next hundred or two hundred or whatever, three hundred years, but mm -hmm. uh they you gotta think outside a little bit too, and you know, they don't have the grass the best public relations, you know? Right, yeah. So, or perception, or, or public perception. perception. Public to be perception, honest, be honest yeah. about that. You know? I mean, I mean, it's it's not perce perception. It's 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 fact. You know, they're yeah. not. It's not. It's not a very uh, uh, accepting country. Mm -hmm. So, this is this is their counter to that, I guess. Instead of getting a little progressive, um, I think the Saudis are front runners for sure. Um. I don't never doubt the mouse, Andrew. I I don't uh I never doubt the mouse, but also Endeavor is another another company Ooh, that I would okay. say could play a part in here. But that's a lot of money for Endeavor to put together. You know, seven billion dollars to get WWE. Do they want to do that? Would Vince McMahon be in control of Endeavor? I think Vince McMahon would probably stay there if they, they do go to Endeavor. But this also then this major synergy between UFC and WWE now. Would you be shocked if out of left field, here comes Jeff Bezos in his Lex Luthor super suit and just buys WWE yeah, and now I'd be really on shocked. Amazon? 
I'd be very <laughs> shocked. Yeah. Very, very shocked. So that's that's the latest here in this in the saga. Did I miss anything, MG? No, I think you covered it pretty good. Thank you. Mm. Our, our very own Baba Booey here. Yeah, <laughs> MG, how, how, give us uh, give us on the spot um, likes and dislikes. How are we doing so far, MG? <laughs> you are you are looking very good. I don't know about doing, was, but you're looking you, great. <laughs> it sounds like you forgot my name. For he did seconds, forget right? his name. He was going to call you Jim. <laughs> He's like, you're looking good. Uh, you're looking uh. good, Jim. <laughs> Give us on the spot feedback every, after every segment. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. A, sure. All right. You want to go Bob into the, Bob the rest of the news? Baba MG. Yeah. Uh, so another, I'm going to read this verbatim. Uh, AEW's Dax Harwood said, FTR has been granted the next few months off of the television. Off of the television. Wow. <laughs> uh yeah well Great. deserved those guys those guys worked really hard in 2022 might as well take a little bit of time off yeah uh this is interesting here's a little report jay white is expected to leave new japan when the contract expires i mean we've speculated about this for the last like year and a half i think yeah. but where does jay white go where does he where do they where does he have a better future well if you think about it and we can play like wrestling fanboy here if WWE is interested in Tamatanga and Hikaleo, eh, maybe give this guy a couple of bucks, have him in WWE. Would he do better in AEW at this point with that saturated roster? I don't know, man. You know, like the the roster is really saturated and they haven't married people on the top tier yet. You know, like Danielson wrestles everybody. Mm -hmm. Moxley wrestles everybody. Hey, actually, Hangman and Moxley are the only two that have been married for so long. Yeah. Um. MJF, we'll talk about him. There was a lot of uh, people were not very thrilled with his performance on Wednesday, and I, I didn't see what they saw. That's uh, fascinating. Yeah, people were are getting turned off to him as a as a oh, cheap geez. heat heel. I'm like, that's exactly what he is. Exactly. I think it was mentioning disco. I think that 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 drove people nuts. They didn't like that. You know what it was is mentioned. You know what it is? I think uh, I know we're going to get into it, but off the top of my head, I think because when somebody is actually funny as opposed to wrestling funny, people don't like it because it goes over their head. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, I think Maybe that's what bit. it is. You know, yeah. like when he I was I was rolling, man, when he said uh, when he called uh, Freddie Prince Jr. You have a dab a douchebag. <laughs> that was hysterical. Get it. <laughs> yeah, that was hysterical. <laughs> uh, Jay White. I think, so the line in, uh, I think the line in question was Konnichiwa. That's what it was. Yeah, he started with Konnichiwa. Yeah. Um, he's a douche it's fine yeah that's his gimmick you're supposed to dislike him people didn't like Kanichiwa, but they liked when he called to catch to take a shitta take a shitta yeah uh, but oh, again stupid. again he's a, he's a character on a television show, show that you're supposed to hate and, he's a good asshole he's a good he's a great asshole yeah, I, I, yeah you know he's fantastic mandy rose was oh so jay white where do you think he's gonna end up I don't know, man. Like, I'd love to see him in AEW. I'd love to see Jay White cutting. See, I think the only thing with AEW is if you put Jay White on TV, he will cut some of the best promos in that company yeah. and probably have some of the best matches. But you and know look what? at that there's roster so that he has them. to wrestle. Yeah, there's so many guys yeah. on that roster. Does he get lost in the shuffle in, in WWE because they can't let him cut those gnarly, no, I did you know, promos? I, you to know? be honest with you, WWE has done a better job at focusing the, the mid-upper card than AEW has at this point. They've they've told you yeah. where these people are and who they're feuding with and what they're doing. Like people got into Sheamus this year. Oh yeah. You know, like they rehabbed Sheamus. People got into him. So I I I I don't know. I don't know what the answer for Jay White would be. I would love to see him in AEW. I think the matches he would have would be way better, but you know. He's a young guy, and he has a future in that company. I don't think he's going to NXT. An IWGP no. champion. He's not going. He just wrestled Okada. He's not going to go to NXT. So it's either going to exactly. be you know WWE or, or AEW. Mandy Rose addressed her release during an appearance of the Tamron Hall show. Rose said that she never told her fan time. Pay she never. She R Mandy Rose said. She was never told that her only time page was why she was released. So <laughs> can we take that from also, the topic? <laughs> she also said on the show that she only posted bikini and like Instagram photos on there, mm -hmm. which is not true whatsoever. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, we all we all saw. I, we all know what happened. I, I I'm shocked that people are shocked that she got released. I don't think yeah, they've exactly. seen the photos that she's posted. WWE had no idea that this is what she was doing. They actually believed that it was like bikini model photos. Yeah. <clears throat> Instead, you're getting buttholes. Lots of buttholes. Lots of buttholes. But that's like MG's fan time page. That is like his fan time page, which I don't go to <laughs> ever. Don't want to go anywhere near it. Will it's not Regal, very recommended. <laughs> yeah. William Regal is now vice president of global talent development for the company. Great. Perfect position for him. ROH Supercard of Honor has been announced for Los Angeles, California on March 31st. It'll be on Friday going up against SmackDown at the Galen Center in Los Angeles. It's a 10,000 person building. Will they do 10,000 people in that building? I don't believe so unless they stack that thing with all AEW guys. I think it's going to happen. It's in Okay, we'll see. It's at 7 p.m. pay-per-view. You think they'll sell 10,000 seats in that building? I think or, or so. Close I think to it? Like you said, I think if they stack that card, they could. absolutely yeah you know and they will you know look jericho showed up at bola come on jericho showed up at bola yeah uh 7 p.m eastern pay-per-view it'll go on sale on friday january 27th this will be going head-to-head -head with smackdown the night before wrestlemania aw dynamite last night did 967,000 viewers or or i should say wednesday night with a 0.33 in the demo i believe they were third in the demo on cable IWGP world title will be defended at New Japan Battle in the Valley in San Jose. Either it's either Okada or Shingo will defend it. They're, they're going to have a match on uh, a new beginning on the 11th. Battle in the Valley is already sold out, by the way. Very excited about that, too. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, Raw, we'll just summarize it quickly before we go into other stuff. The show drew 1.69 million. Let's say 1.7. It was up from 1.6 from last week. Up against college football. The bloodline attack Kevin Owens uh, after he beat Baron Corbin. <laughs> Uncle Howdy showed up. The, you know, one of the funniest images I saw on the internet is Uncle Howdy with the Saudi garb. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hysterical. Uh, Uncle Hattie confronted Alexa Bliss, who was trying to give a promo saying that she was in control. Another Cody vignette aired. Wrongly hinting he will be at Royal Rumble. Why is it wrongly? Strongly? Is that the word we're looking for? Baba Angie, come on. You know, he is like Mr. Magoo. He really is our Mr. Magoo. <laughs> You know, there is a uh, there is a big difference between strongly hinting that he's going to be in the Rumble and wrongly hinting. What, yeah, what is it? Exactly. His arm is dangling off his body. He's like, I'm going to be in that Rumble. They just show him. Oh, they just show pictures of like vacation tickets that he has during the <laughs> Rumble or something. Plane tickets. He's not going to be in town. Uh, the Mr. Magoo shit always makes me laugh. If, some, if you call somebody Mr. Magoo, that will always make me laugh. I used to work in a comic store and uh, we used to have this customer that came in. And he was like a mumbly dude. But our boss would just be like, oh, it's Mr. Magoo. And I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> there's no Mr. reason Magoo? to call there's no reason to call this guy Mr. Magoo and I've laughed at that for like 20 years it's hysterical it's hysterical Judgment Day wins a tag team turmoil match when Dominic Dominic is fantastic Dominic is perfect don't ever criticize Dominic again I love exactly. I love this heartened Dominic uh, I love the teardrop tattoo it, everything about it was freaking perfect so uh, good it was so effing good so effing good Wonderful. I'm gonna stuff. interrupt for it. I'm gonna interrupt for a second, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little deep dive into the chat room right now. Estilo yeah. Latino made a great, great point right now. What is we it? need? We need an MG typo drinking game, guys. Oh, yeah. If that ever happened, you'd all be in the hospital. <laughs> you would all be dead. Do you know? <laughs> like, <all> be... <laughs> you you would. It's it's 10:30 in the morning here on the East Coast. We'd be dead by now. Oh, absolutely. Like if we if we and again, MG, we love you. This is not a knock on you, but it kind of is. If we took a <laughs> shot, if we took a shot every time we looked at the sheet and saw something misspelled, Do you this, know what he this did? show would, would have been over after 15 minutes. Dude, when we went to Chicago, OK, this is a true story. I, I never oh, told yeah, this. Dude. OK, I never. Told yeah, this. yeah, I this got one too. Guy, this fucking guy got so loaded. OK, so loaded. It's like 930. I took my edible. 
I'm hanging out. This dude is banging on my door. I go through the peep, the little people. I'm looking. It's mm -hmm. him chewing on glass. And he's like, I'm from Detroit. I'm from, he's just screaming that he's from the Detroit and he loved the chic. And he's just chewing on glass and banging his head on my door. Where's was that Meltzer? Was that before or after he came out of the, he had two beers. He came out of the bathroom completely naked, apart from a Vader mask. Oh my and God. And he was that yelling was at everybody. And he was like, I fear no man and I fear no beer. And he tried to Steve Austin two cans of beer, except it was two glass bottles. No, no, but and that he was. he just shattered them right over his head. But wait, <laughs> no, no, no. That was, that was after, that was after he came out of the bathroom doing a Buffalo Bill, and he's like, where's Dave Meltzer? I want to show him something. <laughs> <laughs> Fully tucked. Fully tucked, dude. He's just doing a Buffalo Fully Bill. <laughs> oh, my God. He's out of his mind, this fucking guy. You know he eats Don't rocks? This... He chew... that, he eats that's rocks. like his thing? Like edamame. Don't feed him after midnight. Do not feed <laughs> this guy after midnight. <laughs> dude, he's just sitting You're there. No he, like, edama... he had like a little bowl, and I'm like, what is that, edamame? He's like, no, rocks. I collected it by the Hyatt, and he's just chewing Wait. on it. They make my teeth sharp. His teeth are made out of metal. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what he does? He turns into Sonic. He turns into a little ball, and that's how he fucking takes off. Just I barrel. I, did, I was wondering. I was wondering what that blue orb <laughs> shooting through the hallway was. <laughs> it was MG. <MGK. laughs> that that third beer will do it to you. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's yelling at us in the chat room. He's not liking. It. He goes, "Okay, focus." <laughs> <laughs> no, the Buffalo Bill was hysterical. He's bashing his head against the wall. Where's Vicky? He's doing, uh, he's doing a Goldberg. Check me out up Goldberg. And then he headbutt the wall and passed out. Tried to rip his face off, too. That was something. That was something, too. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, uh, NXT. Uh, NXT. Yeah, we'll, we'll skip it quick. Uh, Jinder Mahal wrestled. <laughs> Uh, right. I, I, I'm, I don't know, man, you know, I, I, I the Grayson Wall and Braun Breaker stuff was pretty good. Uh, I'm yeah. a big fan of Braun. Br yeah. He's born, born breaker. Um, <laughs> take a shot, take a shot guys. Uh, but I'm just, I'm not into it. I don't know why D am I, am, did I lose something or is other, or do other people feel this way as well? I do think he should be called born breaker though. <laughs> Born break, break. Uh, I yeah, listen. I feel like it lost a step. Um, I'll tune in or I'll have it on for background noise. But even for background noise, I'll just put something else on, man. Yeah, I mean, I put. You know what it is though. Tuesdays, I I do the show with Garrett, and then afterwards, I'm like so exhausted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such an exhausting day. Not because I do the show with Garrett, because it's just a long ass <laughs> day for me. <laughs> And I don't want to watch. Just threw us. Garrett under the bus. I just threw Garrett <laughs> under the bus. Oh my god, I'm so tired after Garrett. Oh, this guy tires me out so much. Uh, I'm so exhausted. Where I I can't watch it live. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, let's see. We did our award show, guys. If you go to our page, YouTube.com/slash Matt Podcast, do do us a favor. We want to hit 10,000 subscribers this year. We've had a lot of stop and goes with this channel. We we were on the GFQ page. We, we took everything off, and we had to start over a couple of years ago. And it's been a little bit of a chug along to get it going. We're also on Observer, so you get our content everywhere. But hit the subscribe button. It helps us out. It helps grow the page, and it makes uh, you know allows other people to find us. You could also check out the award show. MG Geek put a lot of work into this. Uh, he's very proud of it. Uh, did a great job. And I'm going to send him some money next week for it. So please remind me to pay you. This is my public notice to remind you. That's how that's how people get paid. I just gotta. You guys have to constantly remind me. I have the attention span of a squirrel, so I don't remember anything. Dynamite, love this show. Fantastic show. Great dynamite. Great dynamite. I feel like this was such an explosion uh, on their end, and it it worked. Like there was a lot of the show that was effing rocking, and you started out with Hangman Page defeating John Moxley. Super hard-hitting match. The match ends with Moxley getting knocked out, which I think means he's taking a vacation finally. Dude, the guy... No, isn't he, isn't he doing a couple shows? Um, <clears throat> he's going to indie the dates? UK. Yeah, he has a couple indie dates set. I think he's oh, going wow. to the UK for an indie date. I know that he has that. Um, but listen, man, he does need some time off. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could see that he's, you know, he's banged up. Banged this up. guy, this guy was, he was supposed to take time off after, after, uh, Chicago. Very good match though. Oh, Hangman yeah. and him yeah. really, what a great opener. 
Um, Hang Hangman needed this for sure. Yes. I you know, since getting the title, his stock went down. And I know it was, you know, the concussion didn't help. The CM Punk stuff didn't help. It was just, I, I still can't believe all that happened, honestly. So wacky. Yeah. You know, Adam Cole returned, cut a big baby face promo. Huge. I mean, you couldn't even hear the commentators. It was so loud. The oh, crowd. my God. It, I did not see this coming either. Adam Cole returning. Uh, yeah, he uh, Adam Cole returned. He cut a big baby face promo saying he didn't know if he would be returning and actually teased retiring before saying he was officially back. Uh, you know, he the concussions were way worse than than they put out there. And he took yeah. a long time. When, when was his last match, Matt? Can you find that? It must have been like six or seven months ago, right? He was the guy for a Cole, while. Adam yeah. when Adam Cole last wrestled. Yeah. Let me look into it. I'll be right back. Yeah, you look into it. What else? What else was on the card? Uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry, who's starting to look a lot like Dylan, uh, and FTW champion Hook beat Big Bill. I hate that name. And Lee Moriarty with Stokely Hathaway. Fun, quick match. He hit him with a uh, with a suplex. Big Bill looked nuts. He did. Guy you know what green. though? They need Enzo. I'm gonna tell you. They need yes. to sign Enzo. They need him. They could do a lot of funny stuff because, you know, Stokely's the mouthpiece for that uh, group, right? The firm. Yeah. Um, I would love it if Enzo showed up and they kind of have like, no, nah, I'm the mouthpiece. No, I'm the mouthpiece. No, I'm the mouth. You know what I mean? Like the back and forth between them. Um, is that one of those wrestling things that we're just holding on to because we see Big Cass and he's so associated with Enzo that we can't let that no, go? No, you know what, though? I, 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 It was such a good act. That's why, Great act, uh, you know, yeah. he, you know, was Enzo unfairly fired? Was there was he, you know, did he deserve to be fired? Did they jump the gun? Did they not? I, I'm not even I, I don't even want to go into that. Was he right. out of his mind? I'm sure. But the dude was a charismatic character that worked. And all those people that that were sick of Enzo were the same ones cheering him. When, when they were together. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, they, they what a run they had when they yes. shouldn't have. What an odd team. How they, oh, yeah. how this began in NXT and became a big act. I, I have to tell you, it was one of the biggest acts that they made. It was a great tag team act. Um, and I could see them, you know, if they were to ever do business again, if they want to get Enzo to do something. Think of the tag division there. You know, you got the acclaimed, you got them. You could do a lot with that. I think the acclaimed versus Enzo and Cass in money. a series for those belts that you're printing money right there. Yeah. Big money. I, I dude, I would, I, there's, there's something there real quick. Yeah. Um, Adam Cole's last match was, uh, at forbidden door. So like six and a half months ago, seven wow. months ago. Yeah. So, so it was June, mm, June 26 yeah. to be precise. Yeah. Wow. Wild. Long time. So, uh, you know, Big Bill took a suplex from Hook, you know, sold it like he was shocked, not hurt, which I liked. Mm -hmm. So here comes MJF cutting the promo. What did well, Takeshi comes to the ring. Takeshi comes, yeah, comes to the ring Tekesh, first. Takeshi comes to the ring first. MJF comes out, cuts a promo on him. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Who else was there? Ken Jong. Ken Jong was there. Uh, he does a classic MJF heel promo that upset people for the cheap heat uh, he's doing. People are fed up with him. He's not doing mm. anything. They're they're very angry at him. All right, <laughs> I, I mean, the, the same thing that he mad. did that got him over is now the same thing that's irritating you about him. I don't know what people want. Getting mad at wrestling is like getting mad at clouds in the sky. <laughs> Do you know? I don't. I don't. Like, I don't get. I'm gonna tell you something. I will. I don't want to have a fucking wrestling argument with an adult on the internet. Okay. No. I no. think there's nothing more. There's nothing more pathetic than going to somebody that is enjoying something, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It could be wrestling. I enjoying AEW and then just shitting all over their what they enjoy. It is such a weird thing for me, and I I don't have time in my life to do that. Like I don't want to yeah. have. A, politic a, a political discussion with anybody, and I don't want to have a pro wrestling discussion on why you dislike this company so much. 
It's it's, um, it's sick. It's it's actually insane to me that people are so passionate about something that has nothing to do with them. Very strange don't stuff. Yuck, don't yuck my yum. Don't yuck my yum. And also, you know, listen, just because you watch wrestling doesn't mean you're a wrestler. Or on the creative team. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So, uh, great MJF match. cuts a great heel promo, right? Dance yeah. and mu- Dance's music hits. MJF bolts out of the ring to the top of the ramp, which I thought was an awesome heel move. Um, again, uh, calling Freddie Prince Jr. Yabba Dabba Douchebag hysterical. I don't think I've laughed so hard at a promo in a very long time. You like the Yabba Dabba Douchebag one? I like the Yabba Dabba Douchebag one. I liked how he also peppered in, like, uh, uh, all your heroes suck, <laughs> which I think is a hysterical line. And then Danison and Takeshita had a friggin' banger of a match, man. I want to see these guys in the G1 in some capacity. Dude, he's huge. He's a big boy. Big dude. Man. How many belts is this guy going to get? I hope, the I hope they, I hope they, they're able to develop him into a big star. I really do because I, I think there's something about him. There's something very, um, I, he stands out for whatever yes. reason. You know, he has the it. I don't know whether or not they, they're able to capitalize in it. I don't know because we saw, you know, Okada had it in, in TNA and, you know, it's the same guy and it just well, never happened. So, I hope that they're able to see this guy and the audience, the audience loves him. Let's, let's take a trip into my brain here. So I think the Takeshita thing is Tony Khan's version of getting an Okada and trying to do the best as opposed to what TNA did. Yeah. Just a body. Right. Danison uh, defeated next, him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great with- match. Yeah, with uh, what what did he beat him with? He beat him with Regal, uh, the Regal stretch, right? Mm-hmm. Cool, very cool. AEW Women's Champion Jamie Hayter and Doctor Britt Baker defeated Soraya and Tony Storm. So this so was this was the moment that everybody got angry after this match because Mercedes Money did not show up. Sasha yeah, was boo. not there. Apparently, the lights went out after the crowd, uh, after they went to break, and the crowd thought that Mercedes was showing up, did not show up. So, listen, I don't, is she going to show up? I, uh, there's still time. You could do something at the pay per view. They're building this. Maybe it didn't work out for this show, but you know what? Maybe they're going to keep hinting at the boss, and finally she's going to show up. She's got a very interesting fan base where, like, I know Sasha. a lot of. Yeah, Yeah, I know a lot of Sasha slash Mercedes fans who like really like live and die by her. You know what I mean? And I feel like those are the folks that got like really upset. You know, again, it's like yelling at clouds. Who cares? The match was awesome. Um, My favorite part was Jamie Hayter yelling into the crowd. I'm the fucking champ and kissing her belt. Yeah, she great they, job. Keep that keep that belt on Jamie Hader for as long as possible. Yeah, she's done a very good job here. Uh, I think. Listen, I think what's eventually going to happen? She just going to go over to the other side, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to have three people there, and they're going to need to find another partner. So it's like the outsiders, right? Tony exactly. Storm's an outsider. Soraya's an outsider. Uh, they're all originals, right? On the other side, Jamie Hader's mm-hmm. an AEW original. Uh, she does an AEW original. Burt Baker's an AEW original. So you bring in Sasha for this, and there you go. Now you set something up here. That's okay, a smart cool. Way you to could do still it. do it. You could still do it. Yeah. Let it play out. Let's see, and then exactly. and then yell at the clouds if it if it plays right. out and it's not what you want. Yell at the clouds. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. What else do we have? Jericho Appreciation Society. What did you think of this promo? Ah, listen, I loved okay. it. I don't care. I loved every bit of it. I thought it was a, equally parts amazing and equally parts stupid, which is what I like about wrestling. Um, the whole Jack Swagger hat thing, I was a little that, skeptical at first, but I love it now. <laughs> all right, that I'm into. Uh, Action and Dreddy came out pretty much like trying to do like a like a like a dice clay kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of lot of a lot of nut ball testicle. Hey, nether so your so humor. your broad had a hands on my nuts. You did one of those, Ooh. and then you started smoking a cigar yeah. like cigarette like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I was okay with it. I I do like Ricky Starks though, because uh, I feel like that that maybe there was a little truth to it where he was just like, yo, you're a big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! 
A lot of fun. A lot of fun. You know what? Like, I really think that should good. be his gimmick. Action and Dreddy should start doing. You know, I like the race car gimmick. I think you need to get Bob Holly in here and make Action and Dreddy into a race car driver from the '90s. Into that, or he just does full dice. Full blown. I like, fell on my head and now I talk like this. Oh, full blown pompadour and yeah. leather jacket and cigarette. I do that. That that's why do you think I look the way I look? I'm just a dice impersonator. That is true. When you see Andrew on the street, <laughs> he's straight up, straight up just dice. Oh, a lot of blood but with skinny dice. jeans. Uh, <laughs> a lot a lot of nasty ball humor my jeans are so skinny so you can see my package oh oh <laughs> my jeans are very skinny right now i'm actually wearing chinos today and they're very um they leave very little to the imagination i'll tell you that i got main event pestles. time main event time the elite <laughs> kenny omega and the young bucks matt and nick jackson with brandon cutler and michael nakazawa on the outside defeated debt triangle pack lucha bros penta L zero muerte, muerte, me 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 zero. Uh, uh, you got to give me my Spanish lesson. I'm waiting for you for this. <laughs> zero zero miedo. Zero miero, miedo, Terrible. and Ray Phoenix. Great match. Great match. Great 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 match. Uh, what was it called? Kenny... The match. What did they call it? Escalera de la Muerto. Very cool. Uh. Is Kenny going back to the belt collector thing after the, after that? He got after two now. One. He got two belts. I thought this match was great. Uh, would you? Mm -hmm. I don't. I I don't think it was their best one, but it was a really good match. Great storytelling that Kenny. You know, Kenny couldn't climb the ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, great spots in this match, and now it's over. So now, where do you go from here? Ooh, that's a good question because he did show up with that IWGP US title. Um, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna let that trios thing like rest a little bit and have the Bucks hang on to it for a little while. Um, who do you think is a team that could have like some kind of barn burner with them? I don't know. There's a bunch of trios there. I, I mean, uh, you got House House of Black. That would be the easy the the first one I would go with, you know, for like yeah, a for big sure. program. I you do ha I I do think you need to take the title off of Kenny and the Bucks. I I feel like this is a like almost like a trap for them. Why is that? Someone's screaming outside. <laughs> There's always somebody screaming in your uh in in your periphery. Yeah, the, this I don't know what's going on. Uh <laughs> yeah, I think I think it should be it would be uh the House of Black. They, you could do something with them. You have Swerve. You have Swerve and his his crew. You could do something with that. I, I mean, what I what I would love, uh, acclaimed and Billy Gunn going for oh, all yeah. the all the tag belts. Can you imagine him going up for a one winged angel? Oh my god, that would be insane. Imagine he'll Billy be, Gunn kicks out of the, Billy Gunn kicks out of the one winged angel. He'll be the first one. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't work for me, brother. Uh, AW Rampage, uh, you're going to have Death Triangle, uh, no, uh, Black Kings of Black Thor, Thor, Thorn. <laughs> I think you need new eyes, man. I, I'm so sorry. I can't, no, you know what? I I'm barely able to see this. I need reading glasses. He's, he spelled this shit right, too. He did. Uh, takes on Eddie Kingston and Ortiz, Ruby Soho, and Willow Nightingale face Anna Jay and Ty Mello in a street fight. The acclaimed get their star on the Walk of Fame. We hear from Golden Globe winner Mike Walt Paul Walter Hauser <laughs> Mike dude can I tell you this you is know you I'm can make it. this bigger right I'm gonna, this, control dude, control is, plus man do you see what I'm doing I, that's literally the only way I could see this I'm making it gigantic <laughs> now to see it wow Darby Allen defends his TNT title against Juice Robinson I didn't care for Juice Robinson's promo you know what? I I liked it. He he sounds like somebody and I can't. He sounds like a celebrity, a comedian. Like, hey, and I man. can't place who yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I can't place who it is. AW Dynamite next week. So far, two matches. Oh, fuck you. There you go. Oh, is that you <laughs> or MG? No, fuck that was, you, MG. That wasn't me. <laughs> Brian Danielson versus Bandito should be a barn burner. Jake Hager takes on Ricky Starks. That's right now. making this 18, 18. <laughs> Uh, the, the font's at like a 99 now he put it that's there. a 44 font that's right a now. 44 font i could see that thank you 
Thank MG, you. can you make everything in a 44 font from now on? <laughs> Thank you. All right. All you right. want to do questions? Let's do Q&A, boys and girls. Submit your questions in the chat. You can hit the Super Chat button and prioritize your questions. So we bring it to the top. All your help, all your, uh, all your, everything you donate essentially helps us, and it funds the show, and it funds uh, Paying MG Geek to do these uh, wacky notes with a bunch of typos. That is the bottom line. Like like we said, guys, uh, if you want a super chat, so we'll answer your questions first. We got a little time so we can address yeah. a decent chunk of questions today. And I think a lot of them are going to be fun. I see a couple of good ones in here. Uh, but I do have one that was sent to me from my, my buddy Alex first. If Disney does buy WWE, does that mean Vince has to dress up like Gaston at Disney World? Yes, that's his that's his job. He's Gaston <laughs> at, at Disney World. That's what he has to do. Ha. Ha. Oh my god. You know what though? The universal side though, and John Alba brought this up in Observer Live. By the way, I have Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Live with me this Sunday. Uh very nice. John Alba brought up that, you know, everybody's talking about like Disney in the park, you know, doing something with the park, but NBC owns Universal. Isn't Universal mm -hmm. a better fit for WWE, the live WWE experience? You could go in the Undertaker haunted house. You could be on the most electrifying roller coaster. You go to Steve Austin's bar. Steve Austin's bar. There it's you like, go. You know, you have all these, you have all these uh options. You also could do a show there. Oh my god, yeah, you're right. You could do NXT from there. The yeah, Island Irrelevancy, uh, Island Irrelevancy Party Bar, where it's yeah. one of those pool bars in the middle, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so much stuff. Can I tell you something really uh, fucked up? You want to, you want a little shoot. peek into my my obsessive compulsiveness? I have yeah. to go and take a shower after the show to redo my hair. You can't just do a uh, a quote unquote horse bath. No, I can't. I because <laughs> I have to actually condition and soft because the 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 chemicals that I have in my hair right now. What happened? I didn't get the pompadour up enough. So what's happening? Uh -huh. It's starting to slowly fall down, and by the end of the day, I'll have like the '90s part because my hair naturally parts in the middle. Are you leaving the house today? Yes, I have to go to work. I think it, <laughs> I think it would be hysterical if you just did all this and just did not leave. Did not <laughs> I know I'm staying in the city tonight. Sat on your couch all day. How does How does Jess feel about the hair thing? Um, you know, I have to tell you, she was very against when I went on Finash Ride on Propecia. She was like, okay. you don't need it. You got great hair. And then I went on it. And after three years, I showed her a before and after. And she goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I ever even questioned you. But no, no, I meant not not that. that oh, not my that obsession hair. with the hair. I meant the, the obsession and what you just said now. Like, I got to take another shower. Oh, she thinks so. she thinks she thinks I suffer uh, heavily. I, I have issues. All right, but I think enough. she's numb to it now. You, <laughs> she's numb to it. Uh, um, you ready for some questions? Let's do it. Four ninety nine from Joel. Yeah, Joel. What's the percentage? Who do you think is the most likely to buy WWE? Do you think Triple H retains creative? Uh, yeah, I think for now, yeah, Hunter's Hunter's going to be in char in charge of creative. Uh, whether or not he listens to Vince or how much how, how much pressure Vince puts on him with with direction, I don't know. We don't know that dynamic, but uh, we do know that the reports coming out that Nick Khan was kind of like an intermediary intermediary for uh for Steph and Vince. They weren't really seeing eye to eye on a lot of stuff. And Hunter and Vince were Hunter and Steph were very much against selling the company. I would be against selling a company too, dude. You know, it's my legacy. Yeah, yeah. It's my family's legacy. This is what, you know, their their great grandfather started. Steph's mm -hmm. great grandfather started this. I know that everybody talks about, you know, uh Vince's dad, but his grandfather was a promoter too. Yeah. So I would be upset, but you know how often, and they, they're already very wealthy. So it's not about the money. It's not about the company not doing well. It's not about projecting that, well, you know, TV rights deals, or maybe they do know something. Maybe they feel that TV rights deals are going to start going down and they want to sell the company because they don't, there's going to be a loss in revenue. I don't know. I don't know the answer here, but I think taking it private would be what they're looking to do. 
Uh, so if they are going to take it private, it would probably be, uh, you know, the Saudis. If they take it private. Yeah. Hope that helps. Uh, this next one is uh, five bucks from that bean. A great week of sociology, news, and wrestling. Keep up the great work. And remember, spell check is your friend. And Grammarly. Face. He refuses it. He deletes his spell checker on Word. You Do you think that's because he thinks it's uh, an app that's all about Kelsey Grammar? Mm-hmm. And yep. he's like, Andrew, I don't give a shit about Frazier. I love Frazier, by the way. Fantastic show. Sure, same here, man. Give me that phrase. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, let's see what else we got here. This is from the Shadow Ranger. This is a good one. This is a fun one. What movie would you most want to see totally remade with pro wrestlers? Which wrestlers would you play? Would you have play the lead roles? Good fellas. Give me the cast. Uh, uh, Hulk Hogan in the Robert De Niro position. Okay. <laughs> uh, Macho Man Randy Savage in Joe Pesci's this- position. Come and take a look at these dresses. It's yeah. right down here. Right, and just follow me. Right down here. <laughs> I would have, um, I would have uh, Bret Hart as Henry Hill. That's weird. All right, sensational okay. Sherry as uh, as the wife. Okay, Karen. Can- Karen. People go to jail because they want to go to jail. Karen. Uh, I would also remake. Let's see. What what would you do? Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. That's uh, my Back bet. to the Future. Back to the Future. Uh, Sami Zayn is Doc. Is Doc. <laughs> yeah, Sami Zayn. My my casting is really nuts. So Sami Zayn is Doc Brown. Uh, Roman Reigns is Marty. Brock Lesnar is Biff. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I it. would have um, I would have what's his name as uh the dad as Crispin Glover, Johnny Gargano. Oh yeah, great. And uh let's see, I'd have Alexa Bliss's Lorraine. This would be like it would be a terrible movie. Fantastic. You didn't say it'd have to be a good movie. And also no, it it's not like we're good. good. We're, oh, I'd like to see Lawrence of Arabia with uh, Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> uh Fantastic. let's see what else we got here. Uh a lot of questions here. Uh, this is from Tim B. Is Rich aware that Disney has never shown serious interest in any WWE content ever? Disney isn't an option, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah, he's very much aware. I'm very much aware. But listen, that doesn't mean I can't think outside the box. And I just made a circle. Uh, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to. I'm trying to see the ones that I can read perfectly here uh this is from chill dude if jay white is wwe bound is it main roster or nxt it has to be main roster you don't put you don't put uh him on nxt there's no point in it yeah unless you want a uh, flagship guy oh listen unless you want a flagship guy everybody you know the debate here people were arguing they're like well they put kevin owens and they put uh kevin owens went down there Sami Zayn went down there i'm like yeah but aj styles didn't you know yeah yeah for sure and like, but I think they, I think they stepped in shit with AJ Styles. I don't think they expected what they got. I don't think they expected what they got. And they got something amazing for a long time. He had a nice mm-hmm. long run. You know, 22, 2022 was the first year he did not hold a title in that company. Wow. But 45 years old, by the point. way. 45. Yeah. They treat him well. He's a lifer. He's got his own bus, you know. Uh, hey, let's man. see what we got here. Everything pro wrestling asks. Let me hear Matt Men's best surprise entrance for the Royal Rumble in 2023. Oh, who? You know, we. Who are the legends that they could bring? Oh, you know what, Zack Ryder. There you go. Cardona is a good one. I'm gonna Zach go with Ryder. Cardona. I'm gonna throw something out there that may not make sense, but might be really cool. Steve Austin. Oh hell yeah! What does he do? Uh, I think he like, I think he eliminates Kevin Owens, and just again, <laughs> ju- again, just like gets knocked out. Like he doesn't make it to the bottom four, but oh, I think man. it would be like a fun, fun. Yeah, appearance. you know what though? Wouldn't that take away so much from anything else that happens in that rumble? I think like, that's a right big, way to do right? it. Right? Isn't that too you big? Think so? I, I mean, imagine if the final two. So you have Austin. And The Rock, and it's it's you know oh, Cody oh. <laughs> and like Kevin Owens or something like that is the final four. You're gonna somebody's gonna be disappointed, regardless, right? 
Yeah. You know what I want to see one last time? One last mm-hmm. time. Okay. I I honestly, and this is something I I want to see the back and forth punch between Austin and The Rock one last time. You know what I'm talking I about? Was, Those I two was thinking were killer with the like the that that the open hand slaps back and forth. I was thinking about that Wednesday night when we got Mox versus Hangman and it brought me back to those big wide nonsensical big punches wide that punches these guys yeah. used to throw. Yeah. And you know, I get it now it's a little more like elbows and strikes and stuff like that. But listen, give me like a big wide punch that you could see coming from like miles away. Like that I think that does it for both of us. Yeah. Love it. Uh let's see it's from BC Knight. What would the first creative meeting between Triple H and his new boss, Tony Khan, be like? I think Tony would be like, yeah, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> you're, you're a hunter. Uh, dude, yeah. I, I think that's such a wacky idea, too, right? That they would buy it. Listen, anything is possible. You know, there were a lot of people that never mm-hmm. thought that Ted Turner could lose control of his company and would be sold to Vince. <laughs> And there were a lot of people that did think that. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't think AEW is going to be a buyer. I don't think. Uh, I. It's hard to say. I, I don't see that happening. But that would be a funny. That would be a very funny. Hysterical situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be very funny. Uh, hang on one second here. We got a good one here. Uh if this is Sting's last year, how does he go out? I say he and Darby win the tag title that winter is coming, and he goes out a winner. I think Sting should challenge for the title for one last time. Oh, for sure. Not for sure. that he I think wins, he's... but you give him that one last, you know, it's like this is Sting's final. This is his way out. I mean, he did that interview um, during one of the scrums, and he was like, the re- mm-hmm. it's like I, he had to relearn how to wrestle, essentially. He had to relearn yeah. how to work out, like, for the like the recovery time and everything, but the dude is in his sixties and you know what face paint on and he wears that body suit. Nobody questions a thing. He's still getting up. You know, he's not holding his knees when he gets up. He's still moving. That guy yeah, has exactly. had, you know, I never thought that he would, that, that sting would be the guy that, that went through all the eras. Eighties, nineties. Oh my God. Yeah. TNA run into 2000s, went to WWE in the 2010s, went to AEW in the 2020s. You know, this guy has been around forever. I never thought that he would be that guy with the longevity, but he is. And he's looking yeah, great. Dude. I don't get bothered no. by Sting. He, he, it's never a bother to see him on TV. No, he looks great. He took care of himself. Good for him. You know? Yeah. I would like to see, and Cadillac says, how about Dustin Rhodes challenging for the title too? I would love to see Sting have like a nice series challenging for that belt and also Dustin challenging for that belt. Yeah, why not? Do it. It's fun. How about Jeff Jarrett? Do you want to see Jeff Jarrett? Yeah, why not? And I great. Why not? I, I kind of want to see him hold like one of those uh, supplementary oh, titles. He's, you know, you, you want to talk about a guy that I very much love to dislike on TV. He's that guy. Mm-hmm. Yes, very much. Uh, let's see. This is from BC Knight. Off off of the topic of wrestling, what's your excitement level for The Last of Us on this Sunday? Oh, super high. It's Can somebody explain to me 10. what this is? It's a TV show based on a video game. Okay, what is it about? It, uh, it's not really zombies. The world it's post apocalyptic. Uh, the world is taken over by like these gross looking like plant people zombies. Okay, and uh, there's very few folks left and one girl has the potential cure for this whole thing and she is being guided by this guy who is like a father figure to her who lost his family who takes her on this journey to go see basically like these doctors that could take her blood and fix what's happening to the world so it's like their whole trip it's oh, okay the game the game is incredible um I'm and that. i think the show looks good it got like crazy reviews too i very much like the zombie stuff i I, walking dead i liked the first like three seasons same here and then i just couldn't watch anymore and and you know what what took me out of it was like i know in the book there's no cure right there's no cure Mm. is it still like that the book's over but yeah it's but did it end that so but did it end that way that there was no cure 
Yeah, I mean, like, spoiler alert, uh, The Walking Dead ends and there's still zombies. Yeah, okay, there's no so show. There's, there's how no. did it end? Uh, Are people going to get upset if you spoil it now? I don't think so because it kind of, it doesn't really end like the show ends. Like, in the book, uh, guys, again, spoiler alert if you haven't read The Walking Dead comics, uh, Rick dies, Rick, Rick gets killed, there's a flash okay. forward, and it's his son Carl basically, like, kind of like setting up a new life and it's like a good life. Like people now have like a good life, but they're still zombies. I I would have liked them to dangle like, Oh yeah, there's no cure, but let people think that there is. Mm. And then maybe there's something that happens. Like you show some sort of progress. I'm going to rewrite that whole mm. show. I'm going to talk to them. I'll talk to the writers. Yeah. Talk to them. Give them yeah. a call. Yeah. Uh, let's see what right else after we got. you yeah. get done. I'm um, rewriting the evasion angle. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, rewrite the invasion angle. Oh no. By the way, well, that, did, first. did you see that thing went viral? That that little image that we made, huh? Of Steph and uh, Steph and Shane doing an RF video shoot interview. Yes, that was funny. Who made that? You made that, or Jonathan? Jonathan, made that? Jonathan made it. Yeah, Jonathan made it. Uh, let's see here. This is from Andrew Barker. Uh, which WWE buyer would provide the company with the biggest upside? Is there one company that can provide something more than money to WWE? Um, well, it depends on what you mean by upside. If the upside is that Vince is in power, that's his upside. Yeah, and he'll go private. If it's, you know, who would do justice by its library? I, 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 I guess you would need... I don't know. That's a great. That's a great question. Do you who would, which buyer would provide the most upside? Honestly, I think the Saudis would provide the most upside because they'll inject a bunch of money and they'll be able to do stuff that they normally they don't do. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's the best for optics with them owning it, uh, but Comcast would make the most sense because they're a media partner. But if you want Vince out, you want them mm -hmm. to be. You know, if you want Vince out, you want them to be part of some big conglomerate. If you if you're on the side that Vince needs to be there, then you most likely it's going to be private. Yeah, Does that help. I think so. Uh, this is from uh, MCASP. Do you see AEW aligning with indies like Defy and PWG to help with house shows? Um, not aligning but they're very friendly i mean they send their guys to defy they send their guys to pwg they, they've never been against the indies and utilizing that mm. um i see them doing more stuff with them well it helps that one of their announcers is one of the founders of pwg Ex uh, excalibur yeah yeah you know i think that that had a lot to do with jericho showing up which is nuts which i i think like we have we didn't talk about jericho showing up in bola which i think is awesome Dude, that was wild. Again, not something you would see on your wrestling bingo for 2023, right? I did not know. I think we're living in the uh, uh, in the in the in the simulation. Do you know how he got involved, uh, Excalibur? He was a <clears throat> he wrote for a video game uh, a website, a wrestling video game website, and he met Super Dragon online. I didn't know that. It's interesting how those old forums would connect people. Isn't that yeah. how you got in touch with like a lot of folks that you know today? Yeah, tons. Tons and tons and tons of people that I'm still friends with today, I met on the forums. Mm -hmm. My friend Jay, I met him on the forums. Let's see what else do we have here. Uh, this is from Chill Dude. Chill Dude flooding the chat with questions. Nice. Do you think WWE wants Jordan Grace? No, I think if they wanted her, they would have gotten her by now. Maybe they do want her. Maybe she doesn't want to go there. True. Uh, this is from Carol Jones. Is Triple H gone by the Rumble? No, no. I don't. I, 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 I if that happened, that's disastrous. Uh, this is from MCA, MCASP again. I love French Tony Khan. Thank you. How would he approach Vince McMahon and the WWE merger? Yeah, how does he do it, Rich? Oh boy, what would he? What would he do? I'm going to buy your comp. Number one, I'm going to buy your company. You are fired, and uh, I, I I can't do it. I don't know. You're I don't know fired. what he would do. That's a good one. You are you are you are so fired. Give me Brock Lesnar. You are so fired. And then he's smoking a cigarette. 
I have all your toys. <laughs> I have all your toys. I have all of your toys, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. <laughs> you know, Tony, I, I know that he p- pops in every now and then. Can you, can you just put on that beret for me? Just do it for me. I, I, ha- I do know that he watches the show intermittently. This is also an impression I could never do if I show up on mm. Wrestling Observer Live. No, no, no. You, you, when, we, when, when they're here in, you know, they're going to be at UBS in April. April 1st or whatever that date is, whatever that Wednesday is, April 5th, whatever, whatever that, that around WrestleMania, um, you, when we go, like we have to bring them a little, you know, little beret, little baguette, and a, and a baguette from Milk Farm. <laughs> and a, a little baguette, Tommy, little for beret. You. This is, this is for, you. for you. He'll, he'll, and a pack, and a pack of like, like fancy Marlboro 100s, Parliament 100s. Imagine if he grabs us both by the ears and he's like, <laughs> Come here, let me talk to you guys, all right? I fucking know you went backstage. I g- oh my god. <laughs> Shh, kayf- kayfabe, man. Uh- <laughs> let me talk to you guys. Listen, I know what you've been up to. I know about this stupid whole French Tony Khan nonsense that you're doing every week. <laughs> Enough, all right? Enough. I get it. Enough. Uh- I get it. You guys are, are on the internet. And then he lets us go, and we're like... Jeez, dude! Like we're sorry, <laughs> and, and then he does. He goes right into it, and then he goes, "Apology accepted." <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Ding, 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 baby! I got a bell now. Uh, this is a morning shock talk show. Ninety-five-five WPLJ. Mm-hmm. Scott and Todd in the morning. There we go. Uh, we got Fred the Elephant this? Boy coming in. Fred the Elephant Boy died. Rest in peace, Fred the Elephant Boy. Oh no! Yeah. Um, chill, dude. What's what's at? Ugh. What is an out of left field buyer for WWE that could come out of nowhere? Jeff Bezos, baby. Yeah, Amazon, Google. He's got all the bread. You yeah. Know? Out Mouse. of left field. I, I think the real out of left field would be the cons. And then he could finally turn around and say, I have finally become that con man from Connecticut. Oh, boy. There's only one con in the wrestling business. I mean, you know, th- there'll be so much fun stuff you could do there, but. Uh, yeah, I I I don't ever see them buying it, but I think that is the most out of left field wacky pro wrestling angle buyer you could ever imagine. What if Shot Here, becomes like a figurehead? What if Shot Khan now becomes a character on oh, TV? He be, he like continues he gets, the heel owner. Like he gets really into it like he's proud of his son for doing so well that he's like, you know, I kind of want a piece of this. Let me see how I could do yeah, it. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That'd he be a nice with son. I think that'd be great. Nice fun family story. Maybe, I think listen, Tony maybe needs to grow the mustache. I think Tony needs that mustache. When he when he becomes an on air character, like a real on air character, Tony, he has to be a heel and he has to have his dad's mustache. He has to do it. You know, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I feel like he's gonna stay behind the scenes as much as possible. If you notice, like the first couple of years of Rampage, he had to be on the air and show up. Now, not so much, right? When he was doing the impact stuff though, I really loved it. Yeah. Let's see. Uh this is from the belt collector when do you think the next omega osprey match will take place i maybe forbidden door but i really don't want that to be the match of forbidden door i want there to be a different match i i you know it also depends on what building they want to run that next forbidden door in and Mm. if they think they could do like well what may june can they go into arthur ash in june can they get into a different stadium that could do 25,000 to 30,000 people mm. in your main event is Okada Kenny. You know, you got to do Okada Okada Kenny in uh, in North America, right? Yeah. You got to end up doing that match. Uh if you're talking about this, I, I think this year you'll see it for sure. Oh yeah. Let's see. The questions are kind of loading a little weird here, so yeah, we'll give me one second. Them. This is from uh, Cadillac. Also, who do you think beats Jade Cargill at this point? It'd be cool if it was Sasha, you know, if right, if it was anybody, it would have to be her, right? You would have to do. Yeah, because I, I also think they shouldn't take that title off of her, but they got to have her start facing some tougher opponents. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I think she's definitely like earned her stripes a lot. Over she's the fantastic, year. though. What a what a look, right? <sighs> That what slam. a look, uh, you know, she's growing in ring, but the overall presentation of her is fantastic they've done an amazing amazing job at the presentation 
You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see her versus Jamie Hayter. Listen, she's gonna go for that title eventually. The you know she, maybe maybe she maybe she doesn't lose. Maybe she doesn't lose the title and she says, "I'm done with this. I beat yeah. everybody. I want the other title. Here you go." And you start a bracket tournament and do whatever. This is a good one from Pro Wrestling Joe. Do you know if Warner Brothers Discovery own a small stake in AEW? I don't. I've been asked that the most, like the last couple months. People, I, 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 I know that there was a rumor that they had a small piece. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Um, I know that there will be more AEW related content on TBS mm-hmm. or TNT. I know that they're working on stuff together. <laughs> Um, I, 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 good question. I'll, I'll ask again, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I really wouldn't, but also maybe that's part of the next deal. You know, here's a good one from BC Knight. Should Adam Cole be the one to dethrone MJF for the title? I don't think so. I don't think so. You, you I have think a lot MJF, of other opportunities here. Yeah, I think MJF is going to hold on to that title f- and have good. <sighs> I think he's going to beat Danielson. To be honest, I think he, I know, he's but I somehow... want Danielson to win something. He needs to Same win here. a big match, uh, you know. Or this continues the story that he just can't cut the mustard. He can't do it. It's still a good story. It's still a good story that he 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 gets right there and he just can't freaking do it. He can't win the title. And it's also better for the baby face to chase the heel, right? Always, yeah. What if it carries over and uh, to uh, double or nothing and he gets a rematch there and then he wins the title? Mm. Uh, you could do it, and but do you want to do yeah. you want to do the same same match two papers pay-per-views in a row for 3 months apart? I don't know. Well, there would have to be there would have to be a story advance for I guess sure you could. to make it worthwhile, but yeah. 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 All right. Uh, this is from Mike Awesome. When they have an AEW Hall of Fame, who would you induct first? Uh, John Moxley. Oh, that's a that, that's a good choice. Yeah, he's I been would've... the backbone. Um, I would do. Give me like your. Give me. Let's say ten years from now, AEW Hall of Fame. Who's in that class? The first one. Yeah, give me give me five people. Uh, you would do ten years from now. You would do Britt Baker. You would do Kenny. You would put Sting. Yes, Sting definitely. St- Jericho. You know what? Jericho would be the first one. They would, they, Jericho yeah. would be the first Hall of Fame inductee. Jericho number one. I would throw Cody in there too. Yeah, fine, of course. You know all those guys, all the guys that were there from the beginning. Do they start putting one. people in that never wrestled for them? Like, do they start putting in people in their Hall of Fame? 20 Does Kurt Angle now, yeah. go in their call of, Hall of Fame? Ken Jong. Ken Jong, yeah. He'll be in the celebrity wing, yeah. This is from Estilo Latino here. Uh, let's do a couple more and then be out. Yeah. 11.30, okay. 11.30 out of here. Uh, I got time. Do you pair... Do you, I don't. Do you pair or feud Adam Cole with the kingdom? Uh... I think they're past it, you know. Yeah. Do you do you do it? I mean, no. Do people even remember? Yeah, that's the thing. Really remember? Yeah, I don't think they get like as much regard as people think they do. Which is whatever, you know. Like they're great workers and everything, but like, yeah. you know, it's a saturated. It's such a saturated roster at this point. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, we're, we're Ooh, also we supposed go. to get Ring of Honor TV news. Like, yes. Uh, now, the, the whole story was that they were waiting for the New Japan uh, because they're going to be doing something with New Japan. And New Japan announced that their, their New Japan Strong show is canceled. Uh, so what are you doing here? Are they doing a Ring of Honor New Japan product? Which I think that's pretty cool if they do, if they continue that tradition mm-hmm. of working together on their shows. But we still have no information on this. Yeah, it'll come though. That'll be on the 2023 news for sure within the next like month or so, right? Yeah, yeah, or, or two months. Yeah, maybe a couple of weeks. I would expect it in a couple of weeks. 
This is from Colonel Stutters. Who will be the one to give Takeshita his first signature win? Um, great question. Uh, he'll probably beat like a Malachi or a Neville. You know, he could do that, right? I'm gonna go Moxley. Okay. I don't That's think Mox has any problem putting people over, no. you know, or Jericho for that matter, you know. But Jericho already did that with Action, Action Andretti, and they're they're really milking that cow, huh? Action Andretti, the race car driver. Right, let's see what else we got here. So a couple of oh, here we go. This is from Mike Awesome. When will Ashante make their Tokyo Dome debut? That character is is like 98% dead. Velveteen Dream ruined them. Yeah. The Velveteen Dream yeah. destroyed Enchante. What else? We got we got time for Ooh. one more good question, guys. Give Plus us coming give us out. An... It's happening. Oh no, it's Friday. Uh, uh, That's what happens when you do your hair too much. Yeah, that is what happens. Turn into Enchante. Free Enchante. Hashtag free Ajate. <laughs> well, Ajate has to come back with a better gimmick. Yeah, we need to we need to revamp his gimmick. But uh, I wish you could make those pictures uh, public. Oh man, the Ajate ones. Gross. Which one? With the, the blurred one. Yeah. Yeah, the blurred one with the glove. Nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Nasty. Let's see. Uh, there we go. This is from Pro Wrestling Joe. Why are they not replacing Steph? Did she not have a massive job? Or did she just have a fancy job title? Optics. They did. She was co-CEO. Uh, that was her main job. They replaced her, uh, Nick Khan as CEO. And then uh, she was a chairwoman Vince of the board. Replaced. And Vince replaced her <laughs> as executive chairman of the board. So th she was replaced. Uh, I'm sure her, her board position will be replaced as well, but she was out of that marketing stuff. She was out of the branding stuff. She was just doing day to day with, uh, with, with Nick more than anything else. Mm -hmm. This is from Lewis. Are you guys coming out to WrestleMania? I'm thinking about it. Uh, we have our yeah. tickets available. Uh, so that's not a problem. Let's see if we can get the pot sweetened a little bit, and then we can both go out that's there. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to do here. I that's want what to I'm saying. That pot a little bit. Okay. Sweeten that pot, baby. Get a, get both the mat then. Which say, MJ? I'm raising my hand. For, yeah, we're gonna put you in the luggage, and then they're gonna luggage. they're gonna. But here's that's what's fine. gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna get on the wrong freaking plane. You're gonna end up in Alaska. Key man. That's fine too. Where am I? We're gonna it's a, we're gonna snow you. field. We're going to put you in some luggage. You're going to end up being the caretaker slash babysitter for a family in the Midwest. Oh, look who's here. Idiot Cocoa Butters in the chat room. I'll go to WrestleMania with you guys. By the way, let me just say this. Coco in the chat room made this. I still think he needs an Etsy page, man. Coco, you need an Etsy page. He does. Dude, he does amazing stuff. So he, he, he makes these... It's actually really cool. He makes these Jason masks. Uh, so a little... So that's one. He made this for the club for today. I got to take this with me. But yeah, he really nice. does some really good stuff. I mean, it's actually uh, really awesome what he does. You got to put that Sapphire one on one of the goyles. And he signs them all in the back. <laughs> but he signs them with your name. No, he's just a crayon, dude. He just goes like this. Just like Coco. Uh, two bucks from Mike. Awesome. Thanks for answering my questions. You got it, Mike. No problem. You got it. All right. Let's do like two more questions. Okay. Two more. Uh, I don't think we have any. No more? Yeah. There's there's a... Uh, let's, let's look at this queue over here. Uh, there we go. What do you make of Wade Keller saying Mercedes has attitude issues and rubs people the wrong way? I mean, they've said that before. Uh, and, then, and then did you see that Wade Keller became a racist apparently for, for saying that? No. Yeah, he's getting canceled now. Oh, They're saying boy. he's problematic, Wade Keller. I don't know. I mean, listen, Wade, Wade hears a lot of stuff. Uh, he's tapped yeah. in. Uh, it's possible. A lot of people have attitudes. A lot of people get rubbed the wrong way. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person. Uh, if you're passionate about your career, you're going to rub someone the wrong way. Oh, for sure. And I think she's very passionate about her career. Uh, 
I'm sh- can you imagine how many times someone like like Sasha or uh, any of these wrestlers now Gargano? Do you know how many times they were told in their lives that what are you doing? You're going to become a professional wrestler and do right. what? And you're going to be on t- you're gonna, yeah you're going to get go to WWE. You know how many times they've probably heard that. So yeah, yeah exactly. I would be very I would be very aggressive about making sure that you know f you I'm here I want my push I made it here I want more. So I'm sure yeah. she's she's rubbed people the wrong way, but that doesn't like whatever that that's every job. Exactly, and also if you look at it from that classic perspective of like, yeah, she's a top tier talent. You know why not? It's yeah. fine. And you always, you also, oh, I always think about their Shawn Michaels stories, man. You know, like the late '90s Shawn, just like I, what. I, what I don't think anybody's that much of a handful at this point because you know, like times Sean, are different. Yeah, but, Sean rubbed people the know. wrong way. Hunter rubbed people the wrong way. Uh, the Click rubbed people the wrong way. And look where they're at now. You know, they're running the company. Look where DX is right now. Who yeah. would have thought? Who would have thought? All right. Uh, Do you? Didn't uh, someone I in go. WWE tell her to fix her attitude? Yeah, wasn't that uh, wasn't that uh, John Laurinaitis? Hey, hey. Enough with this the guy, back talk. Guy sounds like a ghost. Uh, where is he now? <laughs> he's a the ghoul. Didn't he uh, get canceled too? He got canceled. Yeah, he was a, he was a naughty boy. What else do we have? All Anything right. else? Or uh, are we done? Yeah, that's it. That's all right. That's it, guys. That was fun. <laughs> all right, everybody, we're done. Rich, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for doing. Thank this. you. Thank you, everybody. MG, thank you for producing. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday with Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Live, trying to break down the entire debacle happening at WWE and a whole lot more. And we'll see you all next time, guys. Take care. Later.